Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Installation Lab. I'm here at the demonstration bench and I'm going to show you our solution to a 50 year old problem with General Motors and Chevrolet pickup trucks and rear wheel drive passenger cars. How to put the bearing on the fork correctly. There's only one way to do it right, but there's a couple ways to do it wrong. When you do it wrong, the clutch doesn't release, you get a lot of release effort problems. So, our challenge was, can we make it so you can only put the bearing on the fork the correct way? Let me show you our solution to this really old, annoying problem. Now the correct way to install the GM fork and bearing is to slide the spring tabs underneath the rear flange. That puts the fork in direct contact with the bearing and as soon as you push on the clutch pedal, it starts to move forward and release the clutch. But what this bearing design has allowed over the years is to put the spring tabs behind the rear flange. When you put it behind, you've created about a quarter inch gap between the fork and the bearing. And as soon as you push on the clutch pedal, you're just filling that gap and the clutch doesn't release. And it's caused all kinds of problems over the years. So, our solution, we put a cup on the back of that flange that's tall enough that you can't get the fork to install underneath it. It'll only install correctly. So, you can't put the bearing on the fork wrong, and this eliminates the chance of making that old classic mistake. And here's what the bearing and fork relationship looks like when you do it wrong. And it'll leave these marks on the bearing. It'll either be one or two marks from the spring tab rubbing on that back flange right there. Now just as a refresher, let's take a look at the wear areas that we're concerned with on an old fork. Where the push rod pushes right there, where the fork pushes on the back of the collar, this one is actually worn to where the bearing that rotates looks like it was cutting into the back of this fork, and the pivot ball. This one, if you install this one and put it in, it actually kind of locks in because of the wear right there. It just has ground itself into a spot and won't move freely. The other area of concern are the guide tubes. This is the area where the clutch release bearing slides and rides on there. They have to be in good condition. Both of these are worn undersized. So when the bearing is installed, the bearing is going to cock and bind a little bit. It's not going to slide freely. Both of these need to be replaced. Just a couple other things about the bearing itself. Notice it doesn't appear to be centered. It's offset a little bit right now. This is called self-aligning. As soon as you install it, start the engine, push on the clutch pedal a few times, the bearing will move into the sweet spot. The other thing I'd like to point out is the grease groove on the inside of the bearing here. That has to have a good supply of grease in there so that it slides freely on the guide tube of the bearing. Make sure that's greased. Well, the flange on the back of this bearing, preventing you from installing it wrong, that's a real solution and it'll make your next GM or Chevrolet rear wheel drive installation go a whole lot smoother. Because if you put the bearing on the fork wrong, you get to take the transmission back out in order to put it on there right. If you have any questions about a clutch installation, a hydraulic system, or a flywheel, please call Clutch Tech Support at the toll-free tech support number.